We are all writers now. Whether you want to write a book or a blog or better text messages or emails, I want to help you with a free ebook called 11 Ways to Write Better. You can find that at theminimalists.com slash resources. Enjoy. The Minimalists. <laughs> Jess says, what does Rob Bell think about the afterlife? Oh. <laughs> does she want me to answer? I mean, well, Ryan, you is, can she answer. Asking, is she asking? Is she asking you? Uh, yeah. I'll, what does okay. Rob think about the afterlife? I have no idea what, if Rob believes in an afterlife. <laughs> I yeah, find I, it absolutely impossible to believe that this experience that you are having as a soul essence in mm-hmm. a body mm-hmm. is confined to this particular brief years of space in this space time continuum. Yeah. The idea that it's over in mm. like uh, 77 years in this body and that the soul, which never stops telling you how indestructible and infinite and eternal it is, mm-hmm. is suddenly like, I guess I'm out too. Uh, I just find that impossible. Is this the finding it impossible? And that this isn't accusatory. We're just having a conversation. Of course. But could that be coming from the ego at all? Like the fact that, that the ego refuses to believe that this is it? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, I'm just curious. Oh, of course. I'm just noting all of the near-death experiences. Yeah. All of the experiences of altered states in all their shapes and forms. Mm. All of the traditions of the wise ones who spoke of an eternal now. Mm. Um, Just the fact that for many people, the body is the outer boundary of the person. Mm-hmm. So, um, this is the this is the outline of Ryan, mm-hmm. and then in Ryan might be a soul or a spirit. So we don't know. Yeah. Um, but some energy. If you would have loved to be here today but couldn't make it, you would have said to me, "Hey, I, I'm with you in spirit." Yeah. So right there, or the people we've lost that we loved that are gone, mm-hmm. and we talk about they're they're still with us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So your body is not the outer boundary of who you are. Your body is something happening within the larger phenomenon that is you. Mm. Oh. You know, it's inter- so. Oh, go ahead. Uh, so, so <laughs> whatever it is that is of your essence or your essence, we already have a lived experience that it isn't contained in simply this physical structure. So, the fact that pretty much every ancient wisdom tradition is like, yeah, this, this is like first round, or <laughs> had some language to talk about the boundlessness of your true self mm. can you I expand go, on the on the eternal yeah. now i mean because i yeah, w- yeah the way i visualize that is like x and y axis <laughs> um <laughs> which is a rather crude There's also analogy. a z axis trace and i love talking about this i just looked over at him like oh this is like he just put the ball on the t <laughs> yeah well okay so if you go up on an airplane and i'm on the ground uh-huh. and we're both wearing watches uh-huh. your watch will run faster than mine mm-hmm. So you go live on a mountain, I live in the valley, you will live more years in the same amount of years because time travels faster, farther from the earth. The mm-hmm. higher up you are, the faster a clock runs. Mm-hmm. So time is actually bendy, stretchy, relative, and there is no now. Because if you asked me, what am I doing right now? And you were observing me and then reporting and telling him what I'm doing now, what I'm doing now would have to, light would have to bounce off your light cones, which take a couple milliseconds. So you would be describing what I was doing a couple milliseconds ago. So there's only now, all of your memories can only take place right now. And all of your thoughts about the future can only take place right now. So there only actually is a now. Mm. And the only thing that goes on forever is the present. So time is actually a persistent illusion. It's not Mm -hmm. set. Because you have your app on your computer, you have that squ- those squares that tell you the days, like they're they're twenty four hour particular chunks. Mm-hmm. But that's actually like saying that the Earth is flat. Because when I walk out of this office building, it'll be flat. It's actually round. Mm-hmm. And what's going to happen in the next, I would argue, twenty five years, is people are going to realize the way they've been thinking about the time time is exactly how people thought about a flat Earth. Look, at, it's flat. Actually, it's round. Mm-hmm. And people are going to realize this whole time construction isn't real. How's that? That's Here's good. what I mean. I would just regret is when you're stuck in the past. Mm. Worry 
is when you're stuck in the future. Mm. But you can only ever be in the present. So those are actually fabrications. They have no essence or materiality to them. Right. Worry and regret are actually illusions. And which is why every single wisdom tradition is always about being here. There's a lovely tweetable so thing. So there's time. There. Yeah. There's a bit on time. And I actually think, uh, let's move it in. I think the next couple of years, you're going to start to see massive numbers of people realizing that time is fundamentally different than everybody thought it was. And mm -hmm. I think COVID is a massive part of it because people are working from home and they're getting way, way, way more done in these much less time. Or even if I talk to you about November right now, November is a concept at this point. Mm -hmm. If I ask you about last May, right? Think of how it's yeah. messed with your sense of what a year, 2020 just, just warped so much of this. So yeah, this understanding, and like you have Carlos Rovelli and all sorts of wonderful theoretical physicists and scientists writing about actually time is way weirder than any of us thought. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Those are fun. But you begin to live with this, it, it shapes you in all sorts of ways. Yeah. No, those are fun little thought experiments. I love it. <laughs> Your smile is fantastic. <laughs> well, I'm thinking my, my daughter the other day, she said, um, just out of nowhere, she said five weeks is three weeks. <laughs> yes, yes, and yes. I, and, and she's seven, but like for, to me that captured in a moment yes. exactly yes. what we're feeling right now. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. And then you think about like like your listeners, your moments of greatest joy in life are always moments when you are caught up in a loss of time. They generally mm. involve some yes. loss of a recognition of the passing of time. I don't know where the time went. When I do this, um, time f flies. Yeah. So you realize that this is actually, we have a lot more to play with in time than we first realized. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Speaking yeah, this of is joy. I we love we this. have to plug uh, an intro to joy. Ah, uh, yes. Um, man, uh, I brought Sean. My wife was out of town to go see the the live talk that you did, a little community theater in West Hollywood, when you were first. I think you were just testing oh, yeah, it yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. And then um, I shared it with my wife um, when you put it out on YouTube, which we'll put a link to it in the show notes if folks want to check it out. And you definitely should. It's it's truly phenomenal, man. Like it's, oh, thank you. Uh, and I, I, it's a comedy special. It's a sermon. It's, um, <laughs> it's, um, we're all gonna a die. Lecture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's a pep talk. It's yeah. all of these things. And really none of these things because those are just labels. It's, uh, an hour or so. It, by the way, time just sort of disappeared when we were watching it. Good. And the next day, you know, Bex, who has no religious inclinations at all? Um, she's sending it like to all her family and friends. You got to check this out. And um, I was just—I I was really fascinated with what you did from that first time you did it, and, until you had a sort of you know, finished product. Um, um, yeah. Congratulations, though. Thank you. You saw yeah. one of the yeah. That was the first time I'd ever done like rehearsal shows, and then you take it out and take it around the world, and it starts to get something yeah yeah it was really fun mm -hmm. yeah yeah that film the the temporal passing fragile nature of life we're all gonna die maybe soon so that's where you find the joy mm. joy is very different than happy happy's the binary with sad same as pessimist is different than optimist like mm -hmm. the but joy is completely different it wraps its arms around the full spectrum of the human experience it can mm -hmm. handle it all